the season premiere of Center Stage Gospel Music. Thanksgiving Eve, Wednesday, November 24th, 7 o'clock in the p.m. Quartet style. Here we all go. Quartet style. Chapter four, the book of James and we go back to where we started on last week. Verse 7 says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Verse 8 says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Again, I want to continue the thought that we started on last week. The power of resistance. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. We shared on last week and um, there was so much that I poured in in just a few minutes on last week um, concerning resistance. Um, but just 
just for just a few moments, uh, I just want to backtrack just for a moment. I don't go too far back on where we started, but I do want to deal with that thought for a moment, just for a moment. Resist, resist, resist. Um, on last week, as I shared with you about resisting what it actually means to resist, and I believe I shared with you the fact that to resist suggests that you actually are in opposition of a force, if you will. Let me use that terminology. The, in opposition of a force. I want you to see <clears throat> the enemy is a type of force, all right? And uh, even though he's a type of force, you need to know that he is not the greatest force. Amen? And so... As I shared with you last week, the idea of exerting force, when we talk about resisting, you exert force in opposition. Um, opposition, as it pertains to the saints, is extremely great. Because we don't just deal with the force of the enemy, but we also deal with the force of the enemy. The force of the enemy and the force of the inner me. The inner me is the real enemy. Can we camp out there for just a few minutes? And so because the real problem is the inner me, I have a responsibility. God help me here. I have a responsibility first to myself to do what the writer here says, submit in verse number seven, submit. That's my position. That's my job to submit myself to God. Hmm. Every time I attempt to submit myself to God, the inner me is going to oppose it. Let's just forget about the devil. Y'all love to talk about what the devil does. And the devil is busy and the devil did this. You know, the devil loved for you to sing his praises. The devil got in the doll. The devil got in the car. The devil, and I was talking to somebody uh, a few weeks back and they was talking about how they were having trouble with number the devil. I said, why everything has to be the devil? The devil got in the car. That car just started running. No, the devil didn't get in the car. The problem is you don't keep the maintenance up on the car. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't hardly change the oil, pull the dipstick out, the oil black. 
And you wonder, why do things sounding like this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, there ain't nothing but the devil. No, 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 no. You. But anyway, submitting, submitting. Every time you attempt to submit to God, the problem is going to be with the inner me. When I purpose that I'm going to consecrate, I wake up hungry. I purpose to consecrate, I'm more hungry for that day. Because the inner me, the inner me does not want to consecrate. Because the inner me knows that if I consecrate, that the flesh is going to be rendered somewhat helpless. The flesh is going to come under control to the spirit. Mm. The power of resistance. The greatest way, as I said to you on last Sunday, the greatest way of building up resistance is to first submit to God once there is a submission then there should be a drawing nigh all right to draw nigh notice he uses the word draw nigh or it suggests that our approach should be consistent and continual. Let me say that again. Our approach should be consistent and continual. Whew. The drawing nigh to God should never end. And the reason why it should never end because there is too much of him that will never be able to absorb. And so, the idea of the approach is to get into him. And when you get into him, become lost in him. I, 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 I shared so much already. I'm not going to be long. Y'all already looking at me strange. The approach, the approach is going to be so consistent and so continual until you're going to lose yourself in him. And when you lose yourself in him, you become like him. You take on his character. Your behavior is like his. You speak like him. Anybody here? Because there's a part of you that is being transformed into the image of God. So draw near or approach him every day of our lives we're approaching him a continual approach that we lose ourselves in him um, I notice people in life and how easy it is for us to lose ourselves in things uh, I, I tell people all of the time it's a wonderful thing to be married and love and all of that but you should never lose yourself in your spouse okay look at this slander he slanders he slander I, I, I can't help but to look at this and, and the more I looked at it I said oh God I'm seeing so much in this I, I, I visit from this passage countless number of times but when I got deeper into it there was so much that kept jumping out at me about this slanderer trying to destroy my reputation with God. Trying 
to destroy God's reputation to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Try, in other words, what you, 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 you're almost trying to say, because see, the enemy deals with the subliminal. All right. He deals with the subliminal. He, 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 he puts stuff in your mind and suggests certain things for you to ponder. That's the reason why we see the word devil, which means ponder to slander. So he's good at helping you or causing you to ponder. When you ponder, you think, and you think long, and you think hard. Maybe it's just me. But there are times in which thoughts were brought into my mind. And I sat there and I thought long and hard. Lord, please help me. There were times that I looked at God funny. I know it's just me. The time I looked at God and I looked at him funny and it was like, uh, you know, God, you know, do you really care? I know it's just me. That don't happen to you all. God, are you really concerned? You know, because enemy hit him. Put this in my mind, and now I'm pondering this thing over. You know, if you care so much about me, you know, why? Why? You, 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 you say you love me. Why? You say you care for me. Why? Oh, Jesus. You told me you love me, but, 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 but why you take my mama? You, 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 you say you love me, but why you take my children? You know that's going to hurt me. Why? If you love me, why you let me lose my job? Yes, sir. Come on, you, you, you care for me. Why didn't you fix it? Why well, could have kept my house? Mm, mm, mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You need to understand that the love of God is not predicated on the stuff of yours that he preserves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, come on. God, please help me. Yes, sir. Help. But his love is predicated on the fact that he gave you the best that heaven could afford. Now, I don't, I don't know what you want anytime someone gives you the best that they have. What else is there to ask for? Now my question to you, have you given him your best? Maybe I need to hoop that a little bit because you know some of y'all going to sleep on me. You know, have you, have you given him your best? You want the best that God has to offer have you given him your best? Yes, sir. Well, I'm just wondering. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have you given him uh, your best? Well, uh, every time I look around. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Okay, let me, let me, let me. We, 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 we always want his best. And God knows that he's already, look at somebody tell me, he's already done that. There's nothing better than the blood. I don't care how many cars you get. There's nothing better, my heart. Hey, glory. There's nothing better than the blood. 
I don't care how big the house you live in, there's nothing better than the old Shah. That's better than the old Baba. There's nothing better than the blood. Without the blood, everything's dead. Without the blood, there's no human existence. Without the blood, there is no eternal life. Yes, sir. No matter what, say nothing. There's nothing that God could give us that's better than the blood. Some of y'all need the blood for what you did yesterday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Nothing to do with Shahaya. Some of y'all need blood. For the thoughts that you had just a few minutes ago. Yes, <laughs> Nothing better than the blood. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, God said, I've given you my best. Uh -huh. Now the question he's asking you, where's yours? Where's your best praise? Yes, Where is your best worship? Yes, Where is your best prayer? Uh -huh. Where's your best communication? Where's your best consecration? Where is your best? Yes, sir. Oh God. Hallelujah. Have you given him your best? God said, I've given you mine. Hallelujah. I've given you the best that heaven could afford. Hmm. I did not send angels. Lord have mercy. To die for you. Yes, sir. Glory to God. Yes, sir. <laughs> Even though there were those that did not fall, but they didn't have the power. Glory to God. To shed innocent blood. It wasn't designed for the angel. It was designed for the perfect sacrifice. Hallelujah. He said only the creator could die for the creature. Y'all ain't helping me here. I said only the creator could have died for the creature. That was Jesus. Hallelujah. The creator of the universe. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, the son of the living God. Thank God for Jesus. So he said, I've given you my best. I gave you a sinless life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gave you a sinless life. I came down here and I tabernacled among you. I got to know who you were. Did you get to know who I was? Lord have mercy. I got acquainted with your pain. I got acquainted with your sorrow. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I had to do something that was never done before. I had to come down and get into a body Lord have mercy and I had to feel what you felt that's the reason why the writer said we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities he said even though I'm not weak but I've been touched with your weakness Ooh, Lord have mercy Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I didn't yield to temptation, but I was tempted. So I know something about what you're going through. I know something about pain. Lord have mercy. No. Huh. I've never been sick. Huh. 
but I know what it is to bear sickness. No, he said, I've never sinned, but I know how to bear sin. I can bear sin and not be a sinner. But because I had to get involved with humanity and find out firsthand what you experience. Lord have mercy. And so that's what he did. He got firsthand. So he said, I know what it is to get close to folk and love them and see them die even though I'm the resurrection. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But I know the pain of losing someone. <laughs> I, I, I know what it feels like to be hungry uh -huh, because I got in a suit to feel hunger. I know what it is to be thirsty. Lord have mercy because when I came here, I went without water. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, one time I went to a well uh, to get water and didn't have nothing to draw with. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So I know, I know what it is to, oh God Almighty, to be thirsty. I know what it is, even though I didn't have. <laughs> Miss the season premiere of Center Stage Gospel Music. Thanksgiving Eve, Wednesday, November 24th, 7 o'clock in the p.m. For textile. Here we all Come on now. Quartet style.